Or you? What are you looking at? Is you looking at the big boss? Ah, look how snazzy he is. He's got to be the biggest and the shiniest boss there is. Let's go ahead and see how we paint him, shall we? Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry about that little mix-up with the orc, he got to the mic before me. Anyway, let's jump into this model. We're going to start by priming it using Wraithbone Spray Primer from Citadel. Our first base color on this model is going to be Jokero Orange, and we're just going to paint this on the belly of the squig. For the rest of the squig skin, we're going to use Mephiston Red as the base color. And the only thing you want to be aware of here is you don't want to do a straight line at the points where the red and the orange intersect. You want to do a more squiggly, natural looking line. With both of those base colors in place, we're going to take Reichland Flesh Shade and we're going to wash this over all of the skin on the squig. You don't need to go super heavy with this, this is just meant to serve as a guide to help us know where the rolls of flesh are for the subsequent steps. Once that shade is dried, we're going to take Cadian Flesh Tone and we're going to begin layering this over the rolls of the skin. Now we're focusing just on the most raised surfaces. You don't want to put this in the recesses on the belly of the squig. Once we've done that, we're going to do a second layer of highlighting using Kislev Flesh. Now anytime you do highlights on the flesh of a model, you want to make sure that the brush strokes go the same direction as the rolls of flesh or the muscle tone that you're trying to highlight. With the belly all done, we're going to begin working on the red flesh of the model. We're going to use Evil Sun Scarlet as the first color for highlighting. Now this is a time consuming process, so make sure you take your time and be patient with it. Once that's all done, we're going to do a second layer of highlighting using Wild Rider Red. Now with this layer of highlighting, we're actually going to add lines that aren't part of the rolls of skin. And just make sure, like I said before, that those lines follow the direction of the rolls of flesh. With all our highlighting done, we're now going to take Reichland Flesh Shade. We're going to wash this over all the red skin. Now we're going to do two or three coats of this, but these are thin coats. The goal is not to really shade the model. This is actually meant to blend all of the previous layers together. On the inside of the mouth, we're going to paint Pink Horror. Now this is a little bit hard to show on camera, but you're just going to put this everywhere on the interior of the mouth and on the tongue. Once that base coat is dried, we're going to take Contrast Volupus Pink, and we're going to use this to shade the inside of the mouth. And you can go nice and heavy with this. It is the inside of a mouth, and the inside of the mouth is pretty dark, especially towards the back of the throat. Once that is dried, we're going to go back through one more time with Pink Horror, and we're just going to highlight the raised ridges inside the mouth. We're now going to take Gene Stealer Purple, and we're going to use this to highlight the tongue of the squig. That way it's a different color from the rest of the mouth. For the teeth of the squig, we're going to begin with Morgast Bone as the base color. Just be careful not to get this on any of the flesh around the teeth. Once that bone color is dried, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and wash this over all the teeth. Now make sure you don't go too heavy with this because it will turn the teeth more brown than they are cream and we don't want that. While the shade is drying, we're going to quickly take Moot Green and we're going to paint this on the saliva that is coming out of the mouth of the squig. Now we're going to quickly shade that green using Beal Tan Green. And finally, we're going to take Nurgle's Rot and layer this just over the very end of the saliva. Moving back to the teeth, we're now going to take Ushabti Bone and we're going to just do little highlight lines starting at the tip of each tooth and moving upward. And the further up the tooth you get, the more the lines will separate, revealing the more brown color underneath. 
Now we're going to do a similar process on the toes of the squig using Mornfang Brown as the base coat. Just like we did with the teeth, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and use this to wash the toenails. Now our first highlight for the toes is going to be Baneblade Brown. And just like we did with the teeth, we're going to just do lines starting at the tip of the toe, moving upward, separating gradually the higher up the toe you go. I decided to go ahead and do a second layer of highlighting just to add a little bit more color difference to the toenails. So I used Rackarth Flesh and did the same thing we did in the previous step. Now we're not done quite yet with the squig. We've got to now do the scales that are on the back of the squig. And we're going to use squig orange as the base color for this. To shade the scales, we're going to use Seraphim Sepia. Just be careful not to let this pool on the red skin that we've painted in previous steps, because it will discolor the skin. Next, we're going to take Troll Slayer Orange, and we're going to use this to highlight the most raised ridges of each scale. Now it's time to work on the eyes. To do this, we're just going to take Avalon Sunset. We're going to very carefully paint each of the eyes. Just be careful not to get this on the eyelids around the eye. To make the center of the eye a little bit more bright, almost as if it's glowing, we're going to take Uriel Yellow and we're just going to put a dot in the center of each eye. The last thing we're going to do for the eyes is we're going to take Abaddon Black and we're just going to put a little dot in the very center of each eyeball. You just try to make sure you line these up so they're both looking the same direction so you don't get a cross-eyed squig. Now we're ready to move on to the orc. We're going to start with Orc Flesh. We're going to use this to base coat all of the skin on the orc. We're going to use Beal Tan Green to shade the skin of our orc. You can go as heavy as you'd like with this. The more shade you do, the darker green this orc is going to end up being. Once our shade is dried, we're going to use Elysian Green to highlight all of the raised muscle on the orc. And we're going to give it all of its definition. This is going to end up being the final skin color. So make sure you do a nice, good, clean job with this highlighting. With the orc skin all done, we're going to now take Rhinox Hide, and we're going to paint the saddle and any leather straps that are on the model. And there are quite a few, so make sure you take your time and identify where all those straps are located. Now we're going to bring back Agrax Earthshade again, and we're going to use this to shade all of the leather that we painted in the previous step. Once that shade is dried, we're going to take Mornfang Brown, and we're going to use this both for dry brushing and edge highlighting. So you'll dry brush all the leather first, and then you will edge highlight all of the more controlled, fine lines that you want on your leather straps. Moving on to the pants now, we're going to use Thunderhawk Blue, and we're going to base coat the pants using this color. Once that blue is dried, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to use this to shade the pants. Don't go too heavy, though, because we want to keep the pants looking blue. We don't want to turn them completely brown. While that layer of shade is drying, we're going to take Abaddon Black, and we're going to paint both the boots and the fur hide that is on this model. Now that that's done, we're going to go back to the pants, and we're going to take Fenrisian Gray, and we're going to use this to highlight all of the wrinkles and edges that are on the pants. Now we're going to go back to working on the boots and the fur hide. And we're going to use Dark Reaper as a edge highlight on the boots, and then as a dry brush on the fur.
As an extra bit of detail on the mantle, I took Celestia Gray, and this isn't quite a dry brush. You want a little bit more paint than you would when you're dry brushing, but other than that, the technique is very similar, and we're just going to put a stripe going down the center of the mantle. Now we're going to begin working on the choppa that this boss is carrying. We're going to use Moot Green as the base color for the choppa, and you'll see why here in just a minute. We're going to take Lead Belcher and we're going to paint this on all the mechanical parts of the model. And then on the choppa, we're going to do lines going the same direction as all the chips that are in the choppa. And we're leaving the raised edges green so it looks like there's Y energy coming out of the blade. With that all done, we're going to take Nolan Oil and we're going to use this to wash all of the mechanical parts of the model. The heavier you go, the more oily and dirty this is going to make those parts look. So it's up to you how heavy you want to put on this wash. Once that Nuln Oil has dried, we're going to take Necron Compound and we're going to dry brush this all over the mechanical parts. This is going to make the edges look a little bit cleaner and brighter so there's a contrast between the oily, dirty spots and the cleaner parts of the model. Now we're going to take Stormhost Silver and we're just going to pick out a few selected pieces of the metallic parts. We're just going to pick them out in a different color just to provide some variety to look at. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take Seraphim Sepia and we're going to use this as a pin wash and we're going to put this anywhere that the bright silver panels make contact with a panel that's in another color. And this is going to give the appearance of oil at the intersection points between those panels. Now we're going to take Balthazar Gold and we're going to use this to paint some of the bolts and details that are on the mechanical parts as well as a handful of the armor panels that are on the orc. We're going to paint the remaining armor panels using Temple Guard Blue. There are a handful of bone pieces on this model and we're going to paint those using Morgast Bone. And if you haven't done the teeth on your orc yet already, do that in this same color as well. At this point, we're going to start shading all of the armor panels. I'm going to start with Contrast Talazar Blue, and I take a drop of this, and then I dilute it down with some water, and I'm just going to paint this on each of the blue armor panels that we did before. For the bone parts of the model, we're going to use Contrast Skeleton Horde, and you don't want to go too heavy with this, because if you go too heavy, it will turn them more of a brown color than a bone color. And for the gold armor panels, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade. Once all of those shades are done, we're going to take Gehenna's Gold and we're going to use this to layer over all the copper armor panels that we did before. But we're not going to do a complete coverage, you want to have some patches where some of the copper shows through. This will give the gold a weathered appearance. There are a few spots on the model that I wanted to leave looking a little bit more coppery. So I took Cycorax Bronze, and I did this in the similar manner to how I did the gold in the previous step. I just wanted to give them a little bit different look from the copper that we started with. Now we're going to highlight the bones, and we're going to use Wraith Bone for this, and we're going to do horizontal lines on the skull to give it a cool texture, and then we're going to do some vertical lines on the teeth, very similar to how we did the teeth on the squig. There's just one thing left to do on this model before we can call it done, and that's to paint the cable on the back of the legs. So we're going to use Avrilin Sunset as the base color for this cable. With that yellow in place, all that's left to do is take Abaddon Black, and we're going to draw a diagonal line that wraps around the cable. And once the line is established, we'll thicken it up and make it look pretty so the yellow and black portions are evenly sized. And with that, we finished up our beast boss on Squigasaur. Thank you so much for watching today. Now, the Grot and the Orc boss both have names, but I haven't got a name for the Squig yet. So if you guys have any cool Squig names, let me know down in the comments. As always, have an amazing day, and we'll catch you in the next one.